Hey guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. The Worms and I were just going to sit down to a nice red and contemplate the meaning of the universe. But uh, actually, no we're not. This wine was revolting so the worms can have it on their own. What we've got here is a, a clean skin bottle of red. Uh, I don't remember where it came from. We might have even found it in a cupboard in a house clean out. It was sealed. Uh, we, it's only got a plastic cork so it's fairly modern. We, um, we uncorked it one night and had a sip and thought, oh, we're not drinking this. So it must have been either a really cheapy or it's gone a bit dodgy. So great chance for my worms to have a few reds and see if they enjoy it. So I'm going to pour this into this little test bed in my garden. And I've just raked through it before. Uh, lots of beautiful worm castings here and I didn't see any worms at all. But I haven't done a test in here for a while. It's fairly damp. Uh, beautiful worm castings, but this will be a perfect time to give this a test. The weather's warming up a little bit and uh, What we want to know is If the worms are at all interested in in whatever microbes come in to break down this red wine So I certainly don't endorse buying bottles of red to tip in your little indoor worm farm. That would be ridiculous But you know if you tip out a dodgy bottle of red in the garden are the worms going to be poisoned? Are they going to be interested? What's going to happen to it? So we'll pour this one in here, because I'm certainly not drinking it. And we'll empty the rest of the bottle, it's a whole bottle. And we'll just check it in a week, see if there's any worm activity. Um, remembering my tests are in open garden beds, so there's no danger if the worms don't like it or if it happens to be particularly acidic or something like that the worms won't come in anywhere near it but uh, the fact that there's no worms in this test bed at the moment is perfect because we can check this and just see if there's any come back in and see what happens let's see if worms actually like a red wine we'll check it in a week's time well, nine days have just shot past. I haven't had a chance to get out here and we did have a few rainy wet days and then there was a terribly windy day. So anyway, nine days in. Let's see if the worms have had a taste of the red wine. See what's happened. I haven't checked it at all. Right, well, there's nothing at all on the surface. It looks pretty much the same as I left it. Let's have a rake around and see if there's any life within I think that's where I poured it. No, I can't see anything. Not a single worm. Now the wine would have soaked down a fair way because the soil is quite loose, it's not compact at all. So I'll dig a little deeper. And we have absolutely no sign of worm life. I can't see anything moving at all. So, all right, that's, um, what's that tell us? Well, I'm sure the bacteria of some sort have got in to break down the alcohol and whatever else was in the red wine. And the worms haven't obviously been that interested in coming back. So there's either nothing particularly tasty here for them, or there's, oh, that's a little, little millipede or something. Um... So, oh, hang on, there we go. There's a worm. Is it? I don't know. Some little slimy thing. It might be a little slug. So, all right, this experiment is probably a bit of a flop then because we haven't got any real evidence as to whether worms can handle the alcohol. Um, I guess the, the positive thing is that there is a bit of life there, so what we've poured in the garden hasn't caused grief. I think what I might try and do before I finish this video up is I'll find another, I think we've got another dodgy bottle of wine at home. I might pour that in a garden bed where there actually is worms, and we'll just see if it drives them away or they actually kind of hang around. But I don't think there's going to be any harm done to your garden. It's just that we haven't got an in... A, an influx of worm activity back into this spot. All right, I'll find another bottle and we'll do another week's test in a slightly different spot and see what we can establish. 
So I found another two bottles of dodgy wine at home. I've just uncorked them. They were sealed. And I've got a spot here in this little half tank where I know there are worms. And we'll peel the mats back in a tick and give it a scrape around. So we're after some conclusive proof as to whether wine is no good or okay in your garden. And I've got a bit of a, a mash here of lettuce. There was two buckets of lettuce from the bakery over the road and about three or four large tomatoes and I mulched all them up in my garden mulcher and if you're just new to my videos here's a link to uh, showing you how I use my mulcher it brings things up as a really nice sort of pulp which is much better I find for breaking down um, a larger surface area the worms seem to get involved much quicker because of the bacteria growth so we'll use that as a kind of control because I know that lettuce and tomato are fine with worms I've done tests on them before I'll put the lettuce one up now, a link for that. So we'll put half of this bed as wine, red wine, and half as the lettuce tomato mix. Just to see what happens, whether the worms disappear completely from this spot, or whether um, they just go to the lettuce part, or whether they actually do get back into the wine. All right, so we'll give it a bit of a scrape around. Um, I dug this over recently I've done lots of tests in this spot and there were worms here just the other day when I dug through it there's a few slaters in here can't see too many worms at the moment but I know they're around here so they'll be won't be far down if they're gone a little bit deeper uh, the other garden bed oh yeah look there's a few in here the other garden bed hadn't had a test for quite a while and there may be just no worms in the vicinity I'm not totally sure. But anyway, we need to do a follow-up test. So I'll just level this, all this off. Um, I am spotting a few worms as I dig through. So it'll be interesting to see... Yeah, there's a few here. It'll be interesting to see if they come back in for the wine or whether they just go to the lettuce. All right, we'll start with the wine. I've got two bottles. I've got Coco the Wonder Dog come to inspect what's going on. I'm not sure if she likes red wine, but I'm not going to try that. Alright, so we'll pour a couple of like long trenches on this side. And if there is any worms underneath here that get a bit of a drink of red and they don't like it, well they've got plenty of room to move away. It's quite potent smelling red. I'm not sure if it was a good quality one or not. I don't even know what variety it is. It possibly would be from one of our local wineries. There's a lot of great wineries around the Gamby area in central Victoria. Um, but I'm not at all suggesting that they make dodgy wine. This could be a cheapie from a supermarket. Okay, so that's done that half. We will put the lettuce and tomato in this half and that'll be right for a test. Don't you think, Coco? Yep. Beauty. So there we go, I've gone half and half, I've spread that out, it's a very fleshy and, and quite quite damp that, quite wet, so we don't need to really water that at this stage, and of course where I poured the wine it's uh, going to be very wet. So I'll put the carpet mats over now, uh, the weather here is supposed to be um, just a nice spring day today, sunny a bit, um, about 18 to 19 degrees Celsius, we've got a good time of the year now for our worms to uh, become active again. So I'll put the mats over, I'll give it a water every now and again to make sure it stays damp and we'll check it in about a week or 10 days. Time for a check, it's been 7 days, 1 week. Let's see if there is any activity with the wine. And it's looking very promising. Okay, I'll take the other side off where we had the lettuce. Oh yeah, there's plenty of activity going on there. All sorts of little critters. We have lots of slaters happening. There's worms amongst it. There's my scratcher. Here we go. Worms coming up through there. But we knew that worms like the lettuce. It's sort of broken down nicely and the worms are coming in for a good feast. But more important is what's happening with the wine. Well, there's worms there. Not a lot, but they are there. There's a few on the surface there. Um, it looks like there's been a bit of mould around here. It's just slightly 
sort of got a greyish growth on it. You might not be able to pick that up in the camera. Um, let's dig down a little bit deeper. I can see lots of little worms amongst it. Yeah, look at that. So that's a really good sign. Whilst perhaps they're not super keen on the wine or whatever bacteria breaks down the alcohol and the sugars in the wine, they uh, certainly aren't particularly perturbed by it. I can see springtails. Um, there's lots of other little things, just tiny little insects. There's a little worm there squirming around. If you can see him. So that's a really good sign. So whilst red wine isn't going to be a particularly uh, attractive food source for them because they haven't rushed in, and I know there's lots of worms down below and they've certainly come into the lettuce in slightly larger numbers. They've disappeared now. But um, the whole point of this was, uh, you know, if you tip red wine into your garden or into an outdoor worm farm area, or on top of your compost bin. It looks like there's absolutely no issues. Uh, within one week, there's worms and lots of insects in there. So that's all good. I think we'll tick this test off as, yes, there's no problems tipping old wine out in your gardens. It's not going to do any harm. Uh, but it's certainly not going to be something that the worms put on their favourite foods list. But there you go, that's what experiments are all about. Just before we finish up, it's a week later, I thought we'll do one final test and just see if there's been any further action. We won't disturb that second mat for a start. We'll have a look at the lettuce and look at that. We knew they liked lettuce and the lettuce is pretty much totally gone. And a little bit of tomato in that, of course, too. So that's good and it demonstrates how many worms are in here. So let's see if anything else has happened with the wine. And, oh, look, they have come in. I'm glad I waited the extra week. There was quite a few on the surface there. Yep, look at that. Where'd they go? They're there. There's quite a few there. Uh, lots of slaters. Plenty of worms. Good, healthy-looking worms. So, no lingering issues with the wine. Let's dig a bit deeper just to finish up with, because it would have soaked right down. That's beautiful-looking soil. Worm castings, fantastic. And lots of worms in there. So there we go. You don't need to tip your old red wine down the sink and clog up the drains with, you could develop all sorts of chemicals in the drains. You don't need to, well, if you throw your red wine full out, you can't really put it in the recycle bins. It would need to go in the rubbish. So this is the best way. Great to put in the garden, fine on your compost. Tip it in your outside worm bins. Don't tip it in an enclosed worm bin. Anything in concentrated form is not going to go well there. But yep, tip wines outside. No worries at all. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.